Good evening, this is the Oscar Expert here with Brother Bro and Mrs. Oscar Expert, and we've all gathered here to review Hundreds of Beavers. This is directed by Mike Cheslick. It did festival rounds for a very long time, and it is finally in select theaters, very select theaters. This is a slapstick, basically live-action cartoon, silent film-esque, but with sound. But with sound, sound not, film, not, but not with sound. strictly trying to be a movie of a certain period, but borrowing certainly from silent films. The slapstick era of silent comedy, we all know the names, Charlie Chaplin, Buster Keaton. This is about a man who finds himself stranded in the wilderness and he is forced to become a fur trapper to survive and get girl. Pretty much the entire film is him struggling to become a competent fur trapper and set up the right kinds of traps to get animals to fall for them in a very Roadrunner Coyote-esque sort of gag, a series of gags. And it's very committed to just being that for an entire feature length. I'm actually kind of shocked that this movie is closer to two hours, given that based on the premise alone, I would think this is no more than 90 minutes. That's a long time to be trapping beavers. That's the, maybe my one complaint is that that was a lot of trapping beavers. But at the same time, it was so fun and every moment was packed with so many laughs and energy and situations that I don't know where I would have trimmed. I wouldn't have trimmed anywhere. I got beaver fever. I've been like thinking about these damn beavers like in the <laughs> days after watching the movie. I'd be at my desk at work tweeting about the beavers. <laughs> I've been putting them on my Instagram story. Like I actually haven't stopped thinking about the beavers. I really liked the beavers. <laughs> what, what did you like about them? Because for me, I, I like that they were a little scary. Yeah, I think if I scary. watched this movie as a child, I would have been scared of beavers. They the were... Beavers is for me synecdoche for the whole movie. I just mean I really like the whole <laughs> Movie. I like an unlikable protagonist. I liked the silly gags. I literally had a Nicole Kidman like we come to this place for magic moment watching the movie because I was sitting there looking at the beavers and I was like, this is why we go to the movies. I just thought it was so fun and inventive and I haven't seen anything like it before. It's unapologetic. If most movies are goldfish, this is flavor blasted. This is such a different type of movie going experience than you'll get from almost anything or well anything that you will seek out in any period of time. It's such a joy to see a filmmaker or you know like a group of buddies because some of the actors have wrote the movie and they've seemed to work together on previous projects so you know a talented group of buddies who have a remarkably original idea for what a movie could look like, what a slapstick movie could look like in 2023, using the magic of After Effects. And storyboarding, like they yeah. had to have storyboarded the shit out of that. Yeah, yeah, this was a feat in storyboarding because you have some shots that are filmed in the woods, you have some shots that are clearly green screen, they're all stitched together. Like the movie's really meticulously made. Even from the trailer, I was like, yeah, the style looks like pretty wonky, but it went to levels that I couldn't have fathomed just watching the trailer. I was consistently surprised. My expectations exceeded constantly with how limitless the world felt. The magnitude of the story was that of an epic. The reason this works for me as like a feature length film, even though you could probably make it like a 30 minute whatever if you wanted to, is because the film established its own logic and its own rules and it built off of them throughout the course of the movie. At first I didn't find the movie like that funny, and I didn't know if it was that up my alley in terms of its humor, but it was kind of like if you get to know somebody who's funny and then you start to find them funnier because you, you kind of get them now. That's how I felt about this movie as it went along. Even if you don't find it laugh out loud funny, it was so clever that it is an undeniably charming that you would enjoy it anyway. I wasn't the kind of person laughing out loud at every gag. There were many people in the theater who were audibly chuckling. Oh, there were there was one person who not, thought it was the funniest movie yeah, probably ever. Yeah, <laughs> like the funniest movie ever. And you know, I, I might not be that person. I'm happy. But I'm very happy for that person. I was having a good time though, and I don't think you need to find it laugh out loud funny because you could even marvel at it and not try to extract humor and you would be entertained. Yeah, I had a smile on my face the whole damn time. The movie doesn't have a purpose. If you break it down, it's so simple that it's comical. And I love it even more for that. A movie that can just thrive on its style, on its creativity, on its inventiveness alone, on its smarts and on its wits, like that was just enough for me. And typically that's not enough for me, but it was certainly enough for me here. Well, that often is enough for me, but I feel like lately every movie 
is preaching something and it's refreshing to just kind of be able to go on like a Disney ride yeah. of a movie no, where I just like, get to marvel at the feet of engineering and furry costumes. It was like Splash Mountain, <laughs> but with violence. It really was like Splash Mountain in a way. Midwestern mythical vibes. What was thrilling about the film was its willingness to throw away logic and invent its own rules at every turn. And it felt like every scene had its own rules established for how things could possibly work. And that kept me on my toes, not knowing how the elements of a scene would impact one of his plans, because you may not expect a prop to behave in the way that that prop behaves, but once you establish this crazy rule that like, no, this thing can behave in this, this particular way, then the movie starts to really have fun with it as the character learns how to manipulate those tools in his surroundings. And at this point, I feel like I'm just explaining something that should be experienced. I really am kind of baffled at yeah. how they came up with every single gag, because every scene felt loaded with humor. This movie may have like a thousand gags in it. Yeah, I was marveling at it. I also think that the sound design was awesome and really fun. I like all the exclamation mm -hmm. points and the question yeah. marks and like the little sounds well, yeah, that, that it was makes a fun like genre bending aspect that it was supposed to be this like old timey slapstick silent film, but then it also had video game motifs in it. It felt very modern. And the music was excellent. Oh, I yeah. had a lot of fun with the music. You the editing was shout out the excellent. Editing because... Shout out my friend's friend for doing the music. So yeah, apparently. It was apparently. excellent. The editing is obviously notable because the entire film was pieced together in post-production. Like, I don't think in camera they were really capturing very much at all. At least half of the shots were probably just this man working with the green screen and, and other elements that would eventually be replaced by you know, composite images of like trees or something. It looked like it took a ton of planning to achieve. There's a lot of details in the movie that I think are funny beyond, you know, what might be obviously funny in the film. Or just generally, I think that the movie is funny. I think that like the way that his romantic goal works is funny. I think that all of his goals in general are funny. Even the co like the animal costumes themselves are funny because they're like very not realistic. I thought the rabbits were cute, and I liked I like <laughs> some of the puppets too. Like I like the, uh, the puppets a lot were awesome and the, and the fish. The movie was just great. Like I need you to watch it. I need. I need you need to watch it. It just will exceed your expectations. I think your your mind could be blown by it. And it's a completely different kind of cinema than what we typically see. So I give this movie a nine out of 10. I also give it a nine. I got beaver fever. I would give it an eight. It's an extraordinary creative feat. It was kind of a lot for me to watch it for that long. Is, is that an unfair thing to say? I think some people will find this repetitive. That's neither here nor there. It is kind of a repetitive film, and maybe that's part of the charm of more of a subjective thing. I don't think there's anything wrong with the movie, really. For me, it got like more fun. I got more and more into it as it went on. I thought it had like a good, great finale. I was surprised that it didn't lose steam as it went along. I think it was my own steam and my own supply that was depleting, but what was happening was more and more interesting, and they kept the intrigue up, which is very hard to do in any comedy. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Have you ever wrestled a beaver?